Blistering diseases of the skin range from the autoimmune to the inflammatory. Here are a few conditions you want to be able to recognize. The first is allergic contact dermatitis, a cell-mediated delayed type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. This often presents as a dermatitic eruption, but certain allergens more often cause blistering, poison ivy, for example. Allergic contact dermatitis can also be caused by other allergens, plant-based or otherwise. These patients present with tense, localized, pruritic blisters, usually on the extremities and sometimes in a linear pattern. These can occur in as little as 30 minutes after exposure. Treatment includes oral steroids and topical corticosteroids for the affected areas. The second are autoimmune blistering conditions. Bullous pemphigoid, or BP, is seen in elderly patients and presents as a more generalized eruption of tense and very pruritic bullae on a background of urticarial or normal skin. The bullae can be hemorrhagic and some might be crusted. Pemphigus vulgaris, or PV, presents as a generalized eruption of flaccid blisters. The age of this patient population varies and lesions in PV more commonly affect the mucous membranes, though this can be seen in both conditions. Patients with BP or PV can have many comorbidities and may require immunosuppressive therapy for treatment. Urgent referral to a dermatologist is recommended. Finally, erythema multiforme, or EM, and Stevens-Johnson syndrome, or SJS, are two conditions that can present as a bullous eruption often on a background of erythematous skin. The palms and soles may be involved. Both conditions can have significant mucosal erosions and the skin may be pruritic or painful. In EM, the background erythema is target-like and the underlying cause is often a viral infection, in most cases, herpes simplex virus. In SJS, the background erythema can become dusky and rapidly coalesce. SJS is very serious, and patients are typically treated in intensive care or burn units. Medications are often the cause of SJS. A few that are more commonly implicated include anticonvulsants, allopurinol, antibiotics, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs.